Today we are traveling to the Pacific during the Second World War. In December 1941, the Imperial Japanese Navy devastated the American fleet at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Japanese forces then launched a series of well-coordinated attacks all over the Pacific. In February 1942, Japan launched an attack on Indonesia. Allied squadron consisting of Dutch, British, American and Australian ships confronted the Japanese in a dramatic and decisive naval battle of the Java Sea. Now it's time to tell the full story of the Battle of the Java Sea. Within just three months after Pearl Harbor, Japan conquered everything from Malaya in the west to Wake Island in the east by skillfully combining their land, naval and air forces. Japanese plan to go further and invade Indonesia was in part due to its much needed rich oil fields. As allies struggled to prepare the defense, the Japanese sent out a convoy of 10 ships carrying invasion troops under the protection of a naval squadron commanded by Rear Admiral Takeo Takagi. On February 27, 1942, the Allied squadron under the command of Dutch Rear Admiral Karel Dorman fought back. On paper, Japanese and Allied navies were pretty evenly matched. Japanese squadron had 18 ships. American, British, Dutch, Australian task force was of similar power. However, the Allied fleet suffered several disadvantages. Their heavy cruisers were smaller and lacked firepower and armor compared to the Japanese. Furthermore, while the Japanese were well trained and with a clear plan of operations, Allies hastily assembled their squadron from four separate navies. This led to communication problems and clashes about the squadron's key objectives. While the British wanted to defeat Singapore, Americans were eager to strike back at the Japanese. Australians wanted to defend their country and the Dutch wanted to protect their colonies in what used to be called the Dutch East Indies. Early in February, Japanese bombers destroyed most of the Allied airplanes on the ground in a surprise attack. This gave Japan complete control of the air. Because of that, Allied warships spent most of February dodging Japanese air attacks. By the end of month, Allied crews were tired and their ships were low on anti-aircraft ammunition. It was one of these air attacks that heavily damaged American heavy cruiser Houston, disabling one of her three main gun turrets. By the time of the battle, Houston and the British heavy cruiser Exeter together had 12 18-inch guns. For comparison, Japanese heavy cruisers Haguro and Nachi had 10 8-inch guns each. Japanese destroyers were equipped with Type 93 torpedoes. They were, at the time, the most advanced weapons of their kind in the world. They were larger than average torpedoes, which allowed for a more powerful warhead. They also used pure oxygen for fuel, which increased the torpedo's range while simultaneously decreasing the telltale bubble trail in its wake. At Pearl Harbor, Long Lance Torpedo proved itself to be a formidable weapon. It was equally devastating in the Battle of the Java Sea. In the days before the battle, Allied squadron patrolled along the coastline of Java and Madura, looking for Japanese warships and troop transports. On February 27th, they sailed toward the port of Surabaya to refuel and refill their ammunition stocks. It was mid-afternoon when the Dutch scout plane reported seeing Japanese convoy some 50 miles away from shore. Meanwhile, Rear Admiral Dorman, who commanded the Allied squadron from the Dutch light cruiser Duratur, instantly ordered his ships around and sailed towards the enemy at full steam. Allies' objective was destroying the Japanese troop transports to prevent the attack on Java. To do so, they first had to break through Japanese squadron defending the troop ships. Dorman's squadron made contact with the Japanese light cruiser Jinsu around 4 p.m. Jinsu opened fire and the battle began. Initially, both sides failed to damage each other because they were too far away. Although British heavy cruiser Exeter had some gunnery control radar system, it was of no help. Worried he might endanger the troop transports, Japanese Rear Admiral Takagi ordered his warships to close with the enemy and sent out his destroyers to attack. Rear Admiral Dorman issued a similar order. The results were instantaneous. A single shot from one of the Japanese heavy cruisers struck Exeter, destroying six of its boilers. Heavily damaged, Exeter responded by veering off course to avoid Japanese torpedoes. Other Allied warships followed in a mistaken belief that Exeter was performing a maneuver order by Rear Admiral Dorman. 
Meanwhile, Dörrmann continued sailing forward on the route accompanied by the Dutch light cruiser Java. As the rest of the Allied squadron gathered around heavily damaged Exeter, Dörrmann recognized what happened and turned his cruisers around. Japanese used this confusion to launch their torpedoes. Only one long lance torpedo struck, yet one was enough and the Dutch destroyer Kortenaar broke in two and sunk within minutes. As Exeter limped away from battle accompanied by the Dutch destroyer Witte de Witt, Australian light cruiser Perth laid a smoke screen to protect the damaged heavy cruiser. By now, Rear Admiral Takagi thought that the battle was over. He was wrong. Allied destroyers began firing at Japanese warships, with the British destroyer Electra attacking destroyer Asagumo and the light cruiser Jinsu. This British destroyer did damage Asagumo, but the crew had to abandon Electra due to enemy damage. Electra sank quickly. The Allied fleet broke contact with the Japanese squadron around 6 pm covered by the smokescreen released by the four old American destroyers. Those also launched all of their torpedoes, but by that time the enemy was out of their range. Even though Allies lost several ships by this point, they didn't give up the fight. Instead, Dorman executed a series of maneuvers intending to confuse Japanese warships and help the Allies sneak up on the Japanese troop transports. However, Takagi anticipated this move and sent out his scout airplanes to find the Allied squadron. Two squadrons briefly met again, around 7 pm and exchanged fire before losing contact once more. By 9 pm, four old American destroyers had to retreat towards Surabaya, as they were low on fuel and had no torpedoes left. Dorman sent the British destroyer Encounter to pick up the survivors from Electra. Dorman lost yet another ship when the British destroyer Jupiter exploded and sunk. Initially, everyone thought Jupiter was torpedoed. However, the British destroyer actually stumbled into a Dutch minefield near the Surabaya Strait. Dorman was down to only four ships. Nevertheless, he attacked once again in a last desperate attempt to destroy Japanese troop ships before they reached the island of Java. The last encounter between the two squadrons took place around 11 pm. Again, Allies tried sneaking up to the transport ships. Once more, Takagi's forces sighted them. As Allied warships attacked, Japanese heavy cruisers Nachi and Haguro launched their torpedoes. Long lance torpedoes again proved their deadliness. A single torpedo sunk the light cruiser Java. The other struck Dorman's command ship, the Rute, igniting the anti aircraft ammunition. The resulting explosion destroyed the light cruiser and killed most of its crew. The battle was over. Japanese Navy won. Following the orders of Rear Admiral Dorman, cruisers Houston and Perth used the cover of darkness to escape the battle. Meanwhile, Japanese ships continued steaming towards Java. A day later, Houston and Perth discovered these same transport ships moored in Bantam Bay. Outnumbered by enemy warships, Houston and Perth nevertheless attacked. They were sunk. That same night, the Japanese began their land attack. Japanese forces destroyed most of the other Allied warships as well. Heavily damaged Exeter set sail towards Ceylon, accompanied by destroyers Encounter and Pope. On March 1st, these ships were intercepted by four Japanese heavy cruisers and their destroyers. Exeter and Encounter were sunk. Pope escaped only to be later destroyed by Japanese airplanes. Japanese bombers also sunk Dutch destroyer Witte de Witt on March 2nd. Only the four old American destroyers survived the battle. They reached the Australian port of Fremantle on March 4th. By March 12th, Allied troops in Java were brutally defeated by the Japanese forces. Imperial Japan now controlled Indonesia and could launch further attacks towards Australia and the Indian Ocean. Battle of the Java Sea was a crushing defeat for the Allies. Although seemingly matched, the Japanese forces were better prepared they had newer ships and better trained crews. While the air superiority of Japanese forces wasn't crucial in the battle itself, it did set the stage for the Allied defeat. Japanese long lance torpedo proved itself to be a formidable weapon, sinking three ships. Allies repeatedly attacked the Japanese fleet several times over a span of seven hours, but their courage alone wasn't enough. Japanese were simply better prepared for the fight, and while they did land several shots that either sunk and disabled Allied ships, those shots were no blind luck. After all, the chance tends to favor those who are better prepared. 
end result was Japanese occupation of islands and control of the seas, which provided them with much needed resources. Without that victory, the course of war in the Pacific might have been different. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together. <laughs>